sacrifice is the price for glory. The very struggle for survival is the fight for greatness. You're watching Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. I think fairly local. I actually forgot to ask her where she lives. But hey, whatever, right? Anyway, her name is uh, Cassie Stada Stefanik. And Cassie checks out haunted places and runs a paranormal team. So ooh, she's going to have some wonderful stories for us. So Cassie, welcome to the show. And tell me, how what got you interested in this in the first place? Okay. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm really happy to be here. So um, <laughs> I've always been really interested in the paranormal ever since I was a little kid. I had some experiences and now as an adult, I kind of figure out what was happening. Um, but back then I used to write ghost stories and read all the Haunted Canada books and Haunted Ontario books. And um, mm -hmm. I, didn't I didn't watch any of the TV stuff because we didn't have those channels. So I was mostly just books. I read so much, so many books. Um, and, uh, always the creepy stuff. So about, about going on four years ago, I discovered there was like paranormal investigation on TV or on not TV, but on YouTube. And so I started watching a lot of those, uh, like YouTube, uh, teams that were investigating. Um, and I became like, I became quite close with some of the people on those teams. And, uh, one of my friends, he was like, you should start because I wanted to start investigating for myself. And he's like, you just, just start, like just start your own channel and stuff. Um, so I was like, I'm like, why not? Like I usually, I'm an airy, so I'm very like, let's go. Yep. <laughs> so I get an idea yeah. and I just like push forward. So, um, so about three years ago, um, actually three years ago, March 4th, I started my channel, but I didn't start posting stuff until like July for, uh, three years ago. So, yeah. Yeah. I have a, a daughter that's an airy. So yeah. <laughs> I understand all about that. Now, what area are you in? Because I, yes, you were up here, but I don't know. I'm Niagara region. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, God, there's a lot of stories down there. Yeah, yeah, a ton of them. Um, have you been to the the Screaming Tunnel? Yes, I actually. Um, we were there. My very first investigation ever. Um, wasn't at screen tunnels. Um, and then I did, we, that video was like three videos, like after the two other locations we went to, but like, yeah, definitely. I've been there three. I, I've been there like probably four times. I did a photo shoot there. Like I love screen tunnels. Yeah. Um, I've got to think when it was, it was a long time ago, uh, late, 1980s early 1990s i was dubbed as the niagara the niagara ghost buster okay okay that's and, awesome uh, did you went to quite a few places down there and and uh wrote some stories and there was an article in the paper about me but um and we lived in sorrel and you know that old mill it or i don't know if it's still there okay uh there used to be an old mill in Thorold. There was a, a donut shop. I can't remember what it was called. Robbins. Oh, okay. Okay. It, I think it was an old paper mill. And it was across the road from Robbins. Oh, okay. I'll have, that's ringing a bell to like a mill in Thorold. Like, I'm, I'm not really familiar with Thorold. I've only just been there like briefly. I've been mean, like just, you know, just around because I'm from Niagara. So like just around there. But, um, that does ring a bell, though, like the mill. Oh, you want to check out some places in Thorold? Yeah, well, there is. Um, um, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a. They closed it now. You can't. Maplehurst. Uh, Kiefer Mansion. Yeah. You can't go there anymore. I. Oh, that's too yeah, bad. Yeah, it's closed. So, and they're selling it. So. Okay. Well, I can tell you a story about because uh, it used to be Maplehurst Hospital. At one oh point. yes. Okay. Yeah. And my husband, it was his grandmother that owned it. 
Oh, okay. Back then. And when I first moved to Thorold, oh, don't worry, you'll, I'll get you to tell some stories too, but you've just worked <laughs> so many things with mine with, in my memory. Anyway, I was writing a book at, at the time. I never did get it finished, but anyway. And in I was telling someone about it shortly after we had moved to Thorold. And I described this house that my main character went to. Well, this woman, she sat there, her jaw just about dropped, just about dropped to the floor. She said, I know where you're talking about. And she took me there. And I knew where this where the secret staircases were. I knew my way around without any problem. Now, the main character in my book was Lucy Devereaux. When we got up to the third floor, the door to the third floor was locked. Hmm. so they went to get the key and while they went to get the key I started to do some automatic writing on the door mm -hmm. and it was signed welcome back mm -hmm. Lucy now I don't know whether it was welcome back signed Lucy or welcome back Lucy and wow. uh, oh yeah and got up we got up there I went up the stairs up to the um oh I can't think of what it's called, but anyway, up to the top. And, you know, and I they took me downstairs and I saw quite a few spirits roaming around. So anyway, that kind of went aside. And then maybe a year after that, I met my husband. I met Russ and we got talking and it was his grandmother that owned it. It was in the family. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So that was, but oh yeah, there's a lot of places down there. So tell me about some of your experiences. Yeah, so um, we've obviously done a lot of like local locations uh, to Niagara. So like Old Angel Inn, um, Prince of Wales, room 207. Um, those were like my very first locations I've ever investigated. So like, and if you watch, I always like, they're so cringy when you watch back at them because they're just like, the audio is not the greatest. Like I, and I'm brand new to investigating. I've only at that point um so we did a lot of battlefields so like the battle of chippewa um i grew up in chippewa so okay. um, yeah so uh, yeah battle of chippewa we did drummond hill cemetery but i'm not one to investigate cemeteries just because it's um like a respect thing i don't want people like saying like i was near like their grandfather's you know stone it's just like that's my preference so when we investigated that location we treated it as the battlefield because yeah. it was the battle of Lundy's lane um so i kind of treated it more like that direction and it's funny i had experiences growing up and i lived on curse street off of drummond and now looking back i'm like obviously i was having experiences because i was on a battlefield you know lived on a battlefield um we've been to um, I'm trying to think of a lot of battlefields. We went to Queenston Heights. We investigated Queenston Heights, which is interesting because you don't really see people investigating there. We were daytime because, yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Um, I'm not really sure if we really caught anything crazy there. Um, I'm trying like, a lot of like that locally. We've done uh, the Cottagewood Mansion in Simcoe, Ontario, or Selkirk, Ontario. That was our probably like one of the biggest locations for us in the sense of activity and experiences there. Mm -hmm. um, we've done the Beck House. Uh, so we did the Beck House two years ago. Um, that's in Penantanguishing, Ontario. And mm -hmm. then we were just back there actually this past uh, Saturday. So we've been to the Beck House twice now. Um, we've done a lot of stuff in the States because I live in Fort Erie. So we're kind of like, okay. we're like right near the border. So traveling is not that big of a it's deal. Totally like, you know what I mean? So um, we went to last year, we were in Kentucky. We did Waverly Hills, just four of us. So that mm. was really cool. We did Bobby Mackey's Music World. Um, we did Old Hospital and College Hill in um, Williams, Williamsburg or Williams something, West Virginia. Yeah, um, Williamsburg, and we I did, mm -hmm. And uh, we did Octagon Hall in Franklin, Kentucky. That was like one trip we did. We've been to uh, Virginia City. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, that was going on almost two years ago now. Uh, we were there. We did the Old Washoe Club and Mackey Mansion. Um, for that time we were there, I was part of, a, of an event. So I helped people lead like people on investigations. And then we did our own personal investigations when we were in uh, Virginia City. Um, 
so at that time, so how we got started basically is that me and my husband, we kind of, I brought him along. He's like skeptic, a bit like a, he's a little bit more of a believer now. Uh -huh. He was a skeptic. I didn't want to investigate by myself. So he came along just because for safety. Right. And, um, so then, um, I was in school at the time for massage therapy. So one of my classmates, she likes creepy things. So I was like, like, you can come and join me. So she started helping me and then she joined Reese. Um, and then my husband backed off because he was like, I don't need to be helping out now. I don't like, you know, like this, whatever. But then when we were in Virginia city, he had experiences at the old Washoe club and Mackey mansion, which led him to be like, okay, I'm back on the team. So, <laughs> so now he's a part of the team again. <laughs> ah, now Niagara on the lake. What have you done much there? Yeah, so Old Angel, uh, Old Angel Inn, uh, Prince of Wales, room 207. Um, we did also Brocklemore Manor. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are the only three locations in Niagara and Lake. Oh, we did a house, a residential, um, but that's kind of like, I can't say exactly where, because for, you know, um, yeah. but that was in that area. Um, and I'm trying to think what else we've done there. I think those are the main ones in Niagara on the Lake we've done, so... Yes. So what did you get at the Angel Inn? Um, we did get some EVPs, I believe. I mean, at the time, um, through sensory gap, we did like, like with, you know, noise canceling headphones. It was a little bit, but the very first time we were there, I we were in the general quarters room and that has like two bedrooms and we were waiting for the bar to get quiet. Um, so we were just sitting, like I wasn't recording and now I'm like, I wish I recorded something. Mm -hmm. But um I saw white mist come from like, there's like a bathroom that joins the other bedroom. So I saw like a white mist and I like jolted and my husband's like, what? <laughs> Cause this is back when he was part of the part of, like, initially. And I was like, I just saw something. So um, more or less that's what's happened there. We did go in the cellar, but it, with permission, but it was uh, too loud. Like, cause, um, cause it, like, you know, like the taps, like for like the pop and like all that kind of stuff. So it was just too loud, but yeah. it was kind of cool to actually film down there and be down there because of how old it is so mm -hmm. now do you can you tell us the story of the angel inn about yeah so there um so with old angel inn the story goes that the, there was a soldier uh captain swayze um he was a british soldier and um he was running away from the americans so he hid in a barrel in the cellar and that he um, got in, died, got stabbed death in the barrel. So that's the what the story behind Old, Old Angel Inn is. So, um, yeah, that place has so much history. I love just going, just even to like the pub, like the bar part, like the restaurant. It's so good there. So yeah, and apparently his spirit has been seen outside mm -hmm. the women's washroom. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, yeah there's a lot. Uh, like, yeah, he's been known to like yeah go in the women's washroom um and if you if they take down the british flag then he's more active supposedly too so mm -hmm. which why is they have like they keep the british flag up at all times yeah. so now did you get a chance to talk to any of the staff about any anything that they saw um i believe i talked to the, the manager um he's the one that let us in the into the cellar and stuff where, like it gave us permission so he did talk about some stories but like on the bar, like things like glasses moving and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I have heard some stories. And I also, um, there's, there's a, they have it on the website too, but there's like a picture of it looks like a soldier. Um, if you look at like the Old Angel Inn's website, it looks like it's like, it's like, it's a, it's a, like a light flare almost, but it does look like it could be potentially be something. So yeah. well, that mm -hmm. sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is a, a lot of uh, hauntings down there. I remember my grandfather, uh, he always used to tell me that anywhere where there's a lot of water, you'll have a lot of hauntings because the sea always gives back her dead. Yeah. And of course, you certainly have a lot of water you know, yeah. uh, down in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, oh God, there is, there are so many, so many stories down there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, and Fort Erie. The, the fort that's another place yeah you know, do they still do ghost tours there they have i don't know if they've done anything recently um i know i went on one before i was a t so probably going on like over three years ago now um they did a ghost walk tour and i had experience on, on that tour 
which was interesting because like there's a story. So I didn't I didn't know the story behind the fort because I'd never been there when I went that time. Mm -hmm. And so we were walking into like underneath the little tunnel onto like the main field. And they talked about, so I, my head started hurting as I walked through. And then they started talking about the story of the guy who got his head blown off. Yeah. And I had the head pain, which was weird prior. And then when we were walking further, I can't remember exactly where in the fort we were, but I felt like something kept touching my leg, like a little kid. Cause that's what it kind of felt like I, I, I tend to have little kid spirits around me a lot. So when I investigate, probably because I'm a mom. Um, but uh, then they started talking about the kids who lived on the fort. So that was like really interesting. I was having experiences and then I get like validated like by their story that they're telling about that in that moment. So yeah, that's good. Now, if someone wanted to get hold of you because they wanted you to do an investigation, how would they do that, Cassie? Um, I email, uh, so weeping willow, uh, paranormal at gmail.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram. So I uh, also weeping willow paranormal on Instagram and then a uh, YouTube, like I have my stuff on YouTube, but like for contacting me, Instagram or my email. So weeping willow paranormal. Okay. That's good. And what are, um, what are some of the other personal experiences that you have had? Um, so on investigations, um, I've, so my very first, okay, actually, let's go back to my house. So my house is over 100 years old. Um, so I, I it's funny because I've been blocking stuff out, like, most of my, like, probably, like, late 20s into mid 30s is when I kind of started, like, I started, I was blocking things. And then I, and then the paranormal opened my eyes and whatnot. But when that, when I kind of started opening my eyes and started doing a lot more like research and watching more paranormal, I started having experiences in my house. So the very first experience I ever had was a lady. I, um, I was, um, in my, like I was sleeping. I had woken up. I looked in the corner of the room and there was a lady with a hood and she kind of just like floated back into my closet. Uh, and then I'm like, okay. So that was one experience I had. I had another experience of, I don't know who she was, but I had another experience of a young boy. I would say like early teens, maybe mid teens, uh, standing next to my bed, like two feet from my bed. Um, he had a scruffy face. I don't know if it was dirt or if it was like a, like a scruff, like, you know what I mean? blonde mm -hmm. hair like I remember like very vividly and I just looked over saw him and then he vanished and I'm like okay um and then the third time is that I think I had brought someone home like a spirit by accident um from a location and I think that's who it was I'm not really sure but there was a man so what happened was I went to bed early my husband had walked into the bedroom so I must have like got startled awake and then I I looked in the corner when I opened my eyes I was looking in the corner of my room and I saw a man and it wasn't his shadow because my husband was like it's just me I'm like no it's like there's I can see a man and then um so then he vanished too so I've had some experiences like that in my house but then when I was in um Mackie Mansion in Virginia City on investigation it was the first time I ever actually saw a uh, a full body figure of a little girl uh, standing next to the chair. Um, and it was funny because I'm like looking down and we're recording. It didn't catch on camera, but I'm like looking and I'm like, is there a doll down there? And they're like, oh, there's like a doll in the, I'm like, like a, but it was like a gargoyle, the doll that they were pointing to. I'm like, no, no, there was like, they're like, like right in front of me. And they're like, no, Cassie, there's no, no doll there. <laughs> so like in my brain, I try to like rationalize what I'm seeing. Cause I'm just like, I've never seen that. I've seen a lot of shadows or movement mm -hmm. or that type of thing, but to actually see like a, a little girl that was, yeah. Yeah. It's really uh, the first time that you actually see something Yeah, in that. Um, it's quite a, a, a different feeling because it's like, I don't know, is this real or yeah. I'm scared, but I'm not scared. And yeah, and it wasn't, I, I, I was just very like calm. Like it was just, I'm like getting goosebumps thinking about it, but it, I can still picture her. Like, and that's the same with the people who showed up in my house. I can still vividly picture them. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. Oh no, I do. Uh, we also like, well, we live up near King Garden, but we also have an old house. Yeah. And we get quite a bit of activity in here and we've had um white shadows or well white mist mm -hmm. going down the stairs and into the kitchen and then just kind of disappearing and we actually did a show just quite a number of years ago we did a 
um, a paranormal investigation here at my house. And we we taped it. And Matt, who was working the camera at the time, you know, he was setting everything up. <laughs> and his tripod moved. And oh, wow. they actually, it was caught on film. And it actually moved about six inches. Oh, wow. Yeah, while he was setting it up. So, you know, when people doubt this, um no it, and i know i've had people am i going crazy <laughs> and well no but let's take a look and and what i was taught you know you go through all the logical first to make sure and then then you can look into uh the paranormal activity side of it but it really it's interesting and and i find that you learn so much history from it yeah and especially when you get into battlefields and you you get to vision to to see and you get to feel like it's just it yeah. really is something but i had mentioned to you i yesterday we were uh we were up in owen sound for lunch and we went to this 50 diners 50s diner and they were playing a song by johnny horton and I know most young people won't know who that is, but some of the older people might, especially if they were into country music. Anyway, uh, he uh, one of the songs he did was uh, Sink the Bismarck. Anyway, that song came on and it brought back a story. Uh, years ago, one of the times I was down in Nashville, I was given the opportunity to interview his manager, Kill Bill, uh, Merle Kilgore. And I was really fortunate to get that because he didn't talk about this subject very often. But when him and Johnny had been friends for years and years, and then Merle became his manager. And they in they were they went to seances and oh, they were into all of this. They were just really fascinated by it. And they came up with a pact that if one of them died whoever died first would come back to the other with the term, with the words, the drummer is a runner. No, the drummer is a rummer and cannot hold a beat. Okay. So, oh, literally days before uh, Johnny died, he went to Merle and he, he said to him, look, he said, I don't have a good feeling. I want you to have my guitar because I don't think I'm going to be able to use it anymore. Well, of course, Merle, it's, well, look, I'll take it, but, uh, you know, I, I think you're being silly. Anyway, within uh, a matter of days, Johnny Horton was in a car crash and he died. Oh. So Merle waited and waited and waited for him to come back and nothing. But then about a year later, there was a group of spiritualists from New York and they during their meditations and their channeling this Johnny person kept coming through and he they he told them that they had to get hold of Merle Kilgore so he did and they gave him the message the drummer is a rummer and cannot hold a beat wow and the exact wording and it's you know I mean this it was something that the two of them had come up with just between themselves they hadn't told anybody so if there's ever any doubt i mean there, there's confirmation on it right there mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah. and uh there's anywhere any place where there's a lot of history mm -hmm. there's a lot of spirits and oh you can learn so much yeah you really yeah, can I yeah, I love the history behind like Niagara on the Lake um, has so much, right? Two of like the battles and like, I mean, the whole town was burnt down, right? So yeah. during the War of 1812. So that always, I've always been fascinated with like that type of history, but also the Wild West. So going to Virginia City was like, it was kind of like a bucket list place to be. So yeah, yeah. and the activity too there was pretty, pretty cool. Oh, that's good. It, so uh, have you got any um, plans of looking at other places in the near future? 
Yeah. Um, so we actually were going on a trip um, in nine days. So um, if you've seen the movie The Conjuring House, I'm sure you have or people have heard okay, of it. No, I haven't. Oh, okay. So it's a movie, like it's a blockbuster movie, The Conjuring House. There's multiple different movies about The Conjuring House. Uh -huh. um, so we're actually going to the, what the movie was based on, uh, the actual location, the house in Rhode Island. Uh, so yeah, so we're doing that and we're going to meet up with some friends um in rhode island uh, another paranormal team and then an, uh so when the paranormal you meet a lot of other people who like to debunk the paranormal so we're actually going along with a he's a debunker he has a youtube channel and he's coming along because he doesn't he wants like to see if, like he just wants to come along with us so um so we're going to this location it has a the movie portrays it as a lot of dark history um mm -hmm. but me personally i don't think it's as dark as the movie portrays it so but that's just my opinion on it mm -hmm. so. okay now curious what do you think of ouija boards um okay so i'll probably never use one just because i no i don't feel comfortable using one i mean obviously i know there's a lot of dark history that necessarily like they put it more dark than it really is because if you're communicating through a spirit box or through anything like you're kind of it's like a Ouija board in that sense because you're opening yourself up but I just I think it's because I grew up in the church too so that's also my background so in my brain it's just in me like I don't know about the Ouija board but also I don't know how to use it properly and I rather just not open that bucket of worms so plus yeah. I have young kids too like uh, like I don't want to bring anything in my house that is not good you know what I mean so yeah and you know this is part of the problem with them is people treat them as a game mm -hmm. and they're not they don't know how to open them properly they don't know how to close them properly yeah yeah and i was uh called into a house down in the niagara area again this was all years ago and they had been playing around with a ouija board mm. and oh boy i'll tell you what a they were really they had pulled in some really negative stuff and there was a little girl who kept getting sick. Mm. There was all kinds of stuff going on. And I went in and I, you know, had my sagebrush to do some smudging, lit it, and it just went out in flames. I couldn't, I put it under the tap. Mm -mm, flames wouldn't go out. It still just couldn't, couldn't do it. Wow. So I just threw it into the sink and I had to let it burn. I couldn't do anything. So it took me some doing. But I actually got hold of a Catholic priest, mm. and I asked him if he would come in and help me with this. I said, well, I can't do this on my own. And sort of tongue-in-cheek, I said, yeah, all right, you know, I'll come and do it, thinking, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> and we were able to to clear the house. And I remember at the end of it, he said to me, I said, so do you believe in like what I do, like what he does? And I said, absolutely. I said, if I didn't, I wouldn't have you here. Mm -hmm. And I said, now, do you believe in what I do? And he said, well, I have to be honest with you. I didn't before, but boy, I sure do now. Wow. Yeah. So it's, um, I could say, but when you were talking about kids, how you attract uh, young children, like spirits of young children. Yeah. Again, when I lived down in that area, I was called into a home and it was a young couple and they couldn't light candles in their house. Every time they tried to light a candle, it would get blown out. And they, I say they desperately wanted children. Well, in the spare room, they had a basket with some toys. Every morning when they went into that room, the toys were all over the floor. Wow. They'd put them back, and at next morning, same thing, scattered all over the place. Well, what it was, there were, it was two little children, the spirits of two little children, and they had been attracted to this couple because they felt their love for children. Yeah. And they, they gave me a visual of, like, inside the house, there was a candle and a breeze, and it the curtain hit the the flame of the candle went up and these children and their parents all perished in the fire oh um, so they kept blowing out the candle because they didn't want their 
new family to end up dying in a can to end up dying in a fire. Yeah. So, you know, oftentimes they really are there to help us too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like I say, it just it's different. Mm -hmm. And it really I, I have found that it leads you down a different path in life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes talking to and, and I think that in a sense, this is somewhere where it's something that you have to be careful of because you can become so immersed with this that trying to talk to, I'm going to say normal people, and by that I mean people that don't do this, you, you don't know what to talk to them about. You have nothing to say because you try and talk about what you do and they're like, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't believe that stuff. So it can really... And this is something that I think you have to be careful of, too. Mm -hmm. it, you, you have to find that balance so that you don't become so immersed. But anyway, um, we are going to take a short break. And then we will be back. So don't go away. Uh, Greg, my name means everything. Tom Longboats! I am Wolf Clan, out of Dugga Nation. I've run many different races. I've run to survive and to be free. I've run to win for honor. His people might be lazy, but this one's damn fast. My people respected our runners, people who carried important messages from village to village. I need a guide to the next post. Dispatch carrier, sir. I can get you there. God sakes, man, slow down. Who do you think I am, Tom Longboat? No, sir. I am. Running makes me feel alive. It's everything. Tom Lombo was the first indigenous person to win the Boston Marathon. He ran his way to international fame and became an inspiration to generations of athletes. Hello, I'm Liz Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. In 2008, carbon monoxide, a deadly invisible gas, killed an entire family in our province. That tragedy led to a new law requiring homes with potential CO sources to have alarms. John Gignac's family members passed away that day, and he shares his story to save others. Please make sure you have working CO alarms in your home. Protect your family today. All right, so in this segment, Kathy and I are going to share some stories. Okay, compare some notes. <laughs> <laughs> now, excuse me, um, with the fort, down in um erie is it fort george or fort uh, erie? it's the old fort erie yeah okay um but i remember the time that i was there and one of the things that i've learned over the years is that a lot of times some spirits don't realize that they're dead like if it was a sudden death they think that they're still alive well at the old fort there are some things that have changed and at one section, they have a like a, a load of boards across. But before, that wasn't there. And where the, the sentries walked back and forth was below that. Mm -hmm. But there's one spirit there. And in his realm, that bridge or that sort of walkway still isn't there. So you see the top half of him above it, and then you see his legs below it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I had a, um, oh, what? Yeah, it's Maple. Is it Maple? There's a spiritual center down in the States. Oh, in, Lilydale. Well, that's it, Lilydale. Anyway, have you ever been there? No, it's on my bucket list. Oh, you need to go. And if you can stay in the old hotel, that's where you want to stay because it's the one that has a lot of spirit activity. It's the one that's haunted. Um, we stayed there one time 
and I woke up and I had a skeleton in the bed beside me and it kept poking at me. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I just said to him, okay, this is fine. I know you're there. I see you. So please leave me alone so I can go back to sleep and it disappeared. Yeah. But, oh yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that has gone on there. Yeah. And um, I imagine all the people that I knew back then probably aren't there anymore mm. most of them have kind of died off or retired Ugh. yeah but uh great place yeah yeah definitely a good place to visit and they have a, a church on the sunday they do a, a church service in erie oh, okay or at least they used to yeah they used to and that is a, that's good. That's an interesting thing to go to as well. You know, Okay. but we, my friend, David, who is now in spirit. Uh, and I know some, I've talked about David quite a bit over the years. So I know most, most of you out there will know who I'm talking about and may have even heard this story, but David and I met uh, our teacher, Lizanne Gallo. She was amazing. She really was. And, and she taught us the good. She taught us the bad. So we knew what we were dealing with. Mm -hmm. And she taught us how to do deep trance channeling. Well, David, and David, he moved into this apartment and he started to see a, a shadow on the wall. And at first he thought it was a nun because it was a hooded figure. But then he realized it wasn't a nun. It was just this man with the hood so one night in class the zen was doing uh deep trance channeling with her and all of a sudden this hood came we started we just called him the hood came through her well, um, was, oh yeah david started shaking and i'm saying oh this is really great <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and uh so when we were done me i'm like Oh, David, come on, you've got to come over. I want to channel with him. And all everyone in the class are like, Ben, you can't do this. You're not strong enough. Oh, Cam, so so I did. And I, yeah. you know, went about it the right way. And he came through and taught us a lot of things. And my voice changed the whole thing. But again, it's more confirmation that these things exist. Mm -hmm. Uh, David and I were called to uh, a summer house up north, and we did the deep trance channeling again. Uh, David was always my channel director. He always put me down, and they would come through me. And one of the maids, the old maids came through. Her name was Mary, and she was Scottish, and the old Scottish accent came, by, came out, and I was just, it was as broad as anything. And so afterwards, we did, we were able to confirm mm -hmm. there, there was, in fact, a maid there named Mary who died on oh. the property. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what are some other stories that you have? Um. Okay. So I'm, I'm the main ones, I, okay, I'm trying to think because I've, I've had a few. Um, the one that stick, like, came to mind when you were talking um, was at the Hinsdale House. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it. Hinsdale, New York. It's in Hinsdale, New York. Okay. So, no, I haven't. Yeah, it's like towards Ellicottville, like New York. Um, so it's a house. It's kind of similar to the sen same sense as the Conjuring House. Like the house is, well, the Conjuring House, I think the story was people are possessed, but the house, the Hinsdale House supposedly is possessed, like the house itself. Ooh, um, yeah. But it's not as dark. Like I, I, I kind of go in in like more of an open mind. I don't really research a heck of a lot about the property because I kind of want to go in with more of a fresh mm -hmm. view on things. So I don't want it, that to like cloud my brain. And I am asking questions and like, you know what I mean? So I try to keep it more fresh. So that location, um, the property is extremely haunted. The house, um, I'm like, it's okay. Like, I think we had a few things happen, but nothing that like, really stands out uh too much but on the property so it was kind of a lesson about trusting my gut because that is 
it was funny that you had messaged that in, in the our conversation about trusting your gut because yeah um at that moment this was going on two years ago august would be two years we we're at the hidden cell house and we we're outside my friend reese like our uh part of my team she was videoing me and we're walking uh and at that time my husband was in the house sleeping because he was just came along for like the ride basically for that that trip he's in the house sleeping we had, we had two friends with us they were in the house investigating the house so me and reese are outside by ourselves we're just walking along and i started feeling very uneasy like to the point where i'm like why it's nighttime but i started feeling like very very uneasy and i'm like i even said out loud to myself i said suck it up like the camera like i I probably tell myself to suck it up because i'm like there shouldn't why am i scared like we're outside i'm like you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i walk a couple more feet forward and next thing you know it you hear running footsteps up to us but no one there so i like look at reese very calmly and i go i'm gonna run now and i just started running and i'm like she's running after me and like it's so funny because in the episode on youtube like i i bleeped it out because she's like swearing and i'm running and um our friend comes out of the house he's ready to fight like a human because he didn't know why we were like running and no like he thought there was this huge commotion outside he's expecting we're on the boonies so there really wouldn't have been a person but anyway it doesn't matter so like he's ready to fight and there's like no one there to fight and we get to the house and there's an evp that said um i caught it i didn't hear it in the moment so it was after the fact that said it's us so it was kind of like that was really interesting. Like that was probably one of the more like, oh my gosh. And that's when I started realizing I should trust my gut. Like I should have just not kept moving forward. But mm-hmm. in my brain, I'm like, Reese is going to think I'm going to wimp. Like, you know what I mean? So and that's like, that's why I'm like thinking. I'm like, I'm not going to like do that. So when we were in Octagon Hall um, in Kentucky last year, we had that place, the energy of that place, because um, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a Confederate battlefield. Like it was through the Civil War, Confederates like were stationed in that house. So much energy, like I get goosebumps even thinking about it. So I didn't want to do so. I like in that moment, I did trust my gut, and I always want to talk about this because I didn't want to close my senses off. So I never did sensory depth at that location because I felt so uneasy. Mm -hmm. And not uneasy because I wasn't scared. It just felt like so much was around me that I was just like, I don't want to cut myself off because I don't know what's going to happen. Because that place, I saw a lot of shadows. We had like even heard a lot. And that's my main thing. I'll hear things and then like the camera will pick it up after the fact. So that's how I kind of get validated. So Mm -hmm. I just started to trust my gut. Like that was like my biggest like takeaway from like investigating. Um, So, um, that place, uh, yeah, it's Hinsdale. Um, also another location that, uh, if you, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's called Chase Manor. It's in Auburn, New York. No. Okay, so that location also very active within like 30. So we were going to investigate the location. We were with another team at that, that house. Me and Reese walk up the stairs. She hits record. I'm getting situated. And there was the loudest breath we ever, me and Reese were just like, what was that? So... It was, that was pretty crazy at that location. I want to go back with a little bit less people at that location just because there's a lot of that, like, you know what I mean? I'd rather just kind of be a little bit more smaller. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely want to go back. That location, we were all finished for the night. Reese went outside and she saw the man standing in the barn door. Because the barn door, or let's turn the barn door, but the barn, mm-hmm. um, I believe was pre-Civil War. So like very, very old. Um so like she saw a man there she just said stay there <laughs> um so which i do a lot like if i'm if i'm sleeping at a haunted location i'm like just let me sleep like we had back house like this past weekend i'm like just let us sleep and i slept okay um not the best sleep but i slept okay <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah of all the places that you've been to what is your favorite okay i have to say Cottonwood mansion in Selkirk, Ontario. Um, that I have got kind of like a, t- a tie, but that one, that location, we had the craziest EVP ever caught. We didn't hear it in the moment. It was like after the fact that the audio camera audio picked it up, but that place I felt like, right. It, so you can still go to it. Um, it's a museum. So, um, 
we were the first overnight team to investigate it. They do have like a resident paranormal team that does do events there and whatnot. And that's how I actually found out about it. And I just reached out to them and I said, can we investigate like this location? And they're, and they're like, okay, like, kind of how it worked out. But that place, like I, my family's from Simcoe, the, that direction. So it, it kind of like that place is kind of just holds a little special place in my heart. Um, but that location had, I love the vibe of it. We had a lot of activity, a lot of EVPs. Um, and it's old, like Victorian style house. And I love that type of thing, but oh, yeah, it's like probably one of like, I mean, my house is not the Victorian style cause I like it, but it was, it's like older. So I love old houses, but my second most favorite location and kind of tied with Cotto and mansion was the Washoe club in Virginia city, Nevada. Um, just because of the wild west aspect, it uh, aspect of it. Um, it was this old saloon and it was a general, a gentleman's club upstairs. Um, so it's like, I just love that place. I saw like shadows moving into walls that were like a dead end. We played poker with a ghost, which was really cool. Wow. Um, it, it, there's a lot of interesting experiences and that it was like, I love that location. So those are my two. Yeah. That now I've never played poker with a ghost. No. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I've had, bounced a ball back and forth mm -hmm. with spirit yeah but uh never played poker that's a new one yeah it was cool it was cool like we had our friends so what happened at our table we had the emf reader we had a rem pod and so we had other equipment in in the area we were on the table and our friend that was with us her name is karen she was holding up cards kind of like she couldn't see the cards but she's holding the cards off the side and we're like oh do you like your hand like there's more to the story it's on our episode if you ever watch it but um like holding it up and then the lights the REM pods started going off like emf started going off and then the ghost won its hand so <laughs> so can you explain to us what about some of the the different equipment that you mm -hmm. use yeah you're, you're talking about now i'm familiar with it but i know not everybody is Yes. Yeah. So, um, so an EMF reader, basically it just detects electrical frequency. So it will light up. You have to be really careful with that too. Cause it, if you have it near like Wi-Fi or if you have it near electrical outlet, it will go off. So you kind of have to be really careful with that. You kind of have to like figure out like what's happening with that. Um, a digital recorder, obviously just like a recording. We don't get a heck of a lot of EVPs off a digital recorder. I mostly get a lot of my EVPs off my camera audio. Mm -hmm. Um, just for us, I mean, other people I know do get a lot of like EM or EVPs, like, um, you know, disembodied voices off of digital recorders. We just don't really have that luck. Um, so Spirit Box, uh, what we use, uh, so that is like a radio basically, but it skips through the stations really fast. Um, my favorite way to use the Spirit Box is either, S it's called SS method or sensory. I call it sensory depth, but basically you put noise canceling headphones on, plug it into the, to the Spirit Box blindfold, and you just kind of sit there and then people ask questions. Um, mm -hmm. And then you just repeat whatever you hear. Like sometimes you can hear it's radio. So you have to like kind of yeah. really discern like what you're hearing. Um, I've had some really interesting experiences with that where it being quite accurate. Um, but it's probably one of my favorite ones to, to do or like things to use. And also we have a REM pod. So a REM pod basically is like a proximity meter basically. So the closer it gets to the antenna, the lap, like it will light up. Ours lights up and also makes a noise. But you have to be really careful with that too, because Wi-Fi will boost it, or uh, Wi-Fi will set it off. Mm -hmm. Um, I recently learned walkie talkies will set it off. I've never had that instance, obviously, with walkie talkies. I've never had that experience because like you don't really we don't have walkie talkies on investigation, but mm -hmm. um but Wi-Fi definitely. We were actually at Bobby Mackey's uh, Music World in Kentucky. And when the REM pod was going off and it was going off crazy and crazy. But the problem was we realized that there was a train parked right behind Bobby Mackey's, like right close to the building. Like you could like maybe 20 feet away. Yeah. So we figured it was the CB radio from the train setting it off. Um, so you have to be really careful. I mean, it's funny because like a lot of the equipment, my favorite thing to use is my myself. Like I, I tend to trust like i feel things i feel energy shift i'll hear things so i'll trust myself more than the equipment but i like having the equipment because it can visually validate what you're catching potentially so okay now yeah. 
one of the things that I've been had my attention drawn to, uh, there are different apps mm. that you can get for your cell phone. Yeah. Okay. What are your thoughts on those? That's such a touchy subject because everyone's like, I love them. And some people are like, I hate them. I used to use them all the time because I thought that was just the thing you did because like everyone was huh? using them. I'm not hundred percent a fan. I don't use them. Like I used to use them uh, back then. I was like, but even since back, back then I was never like, Oh my gosh, this is like, this is like, there's a demon. We will say demon or whatever. Like back then I was never like that, but I would yeah. trust it a little bit more than I probably should have. And up until like recently now I just don't use them because I'm like, I can't, you can't validate like no. the phone could be listening to you and like t repeating what, like, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of like, I don't know, like, but I have, when I have used them in the past, it was more or less like a conversation starter. So it would be like, it would say, I don't know, fan or say, it will say like something. And then you're like, Oh, then you kind of like get your mind rolling. So I would use yeah. it in that sense, but never like, Oh my gosh, this is fact. This is like, there's a bob here, you know? So <laughs> Yeah, um, I was with a, a group of women oh, a year or two ago, and that's when they they started talking about this. And of course, they've all got their their phones on and this app going all at the same time. All right. And I thought, yeah, but wait a minute, you're not getting true readings because you're picking up from this and that. And I, I didn't say anything because they were having fun and they thought they knew what they were doing. And I thought, well. Who am I to burst their bubble? Yeah. <laughs> so just sat quiet and I thought, no, nah, I just don't believe any of it because I know it, it's not going to be as accurate. Mm -hmm. But it is also, but because they were. Oh, 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 sorry. I don't know. Come on. Everything okay? Uh, sorry. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Oh, dog. <laughs> Well, I certainly understand when you've got dogs because I keep mine out of the office, but we have a, a I have a, a French door and there's a pane of glass missing. We have a Doberman, a King Doberman. And every so often she'll come and she'll stick her head through the door to see what's going on. But you no, know, if I had the door open, she'd be in here. But her, her, the problem with her, she's still a puppy. So oh, she's into everything. She's into everything. Yeah. Sorry, my husband was just like, what are you doing? He's got home from work. That's why he, there was a dog barking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Now, if somebody uh, was interested in getting into mm -hmm. paranormal investigations, what is the most valuable piece of equipment that you have? And I'm not talking financially wise but the most useful that you use that you would suggest to anybody who wanted to, you know, kind of dabble around in it, what would you suggest that they start with? Okay. So that's like a loaded question for me. Okay. So I, my favorite, favorite thing to use, obviously other than myself, but is my camera, my camera. Cause if you catch any, I've never caught anything visually. So it's so rare when you will see YouTube channels going, balls through like you know what I mean like so much happening that's so yeah. rare but I like my camera because I can like record our our experience so I you can hear like you know what I mean? you're recording your experience but also it catches EVP so like if money wasn't an issue I would say a camera I and mean, you don't have to have an expensive camera like we have a Sony it's like mid-range mm -hmm. um that's like my favorite or if you're like um digital recorder like a digital recorder um is really handy because I know a lot of people do have experience. If you have a if you have a cell phone, there's like recorders on your phone too, yeah. so you don't necessarily have to like buy like a fancy recorder. Like our recorder, I think I bought for like forty bucks is a Sony. Um, so if you were just to go out, I would probably like camera because that way, you, like at least you, it's almost like a snapshot, like a memory thing, right? Like you can watch it back and be like, oh yeah, I forgot this happened or or whatnot. Um, um, or yeah, digital recorder. Those are like main things like, cause REM pods and EMF readers, 
are so like finicky like i don't know like it's okay to have them like if you want to start like if you can't i have this tool chest is full of all my equipment <laughs> but like i really only ever just use like I, I mean not only ever use my camera spare box noise canceling headphones digital recorder and i have like a, a bear that lights up it's emf like a, my emf reader too so like very little because I tr like I just trust myself more and how I'm feeling in my camera. Like that's how I. Yeah. Yeah. When we're done here, I've written a note to myself, so I'll do it. But I'm going to send you a picture. Okay. All right. Now this was taken at the cemetery in Niagara. Okay. And uh, this friend of mine, John, he was a professional photographer. And uh, we were supposed to go to someone's house to uh, for to interview and take pictures because of that spirit activity. And it didn't matter what way we went. We kept ending up at this cemetery. Now, John and I had been doing playing around with past lives, right? Mm. So we thought, well, let's just walk around. Yeah. Well, didn't we find a headstone? with his name on it, on who we had already confirmed he was in a past life. Oh, the goosebumps. Oh, so anyway, it was getting late in the day. So John said, well, look, let's come back one day next week. I'll have, you know, we'll bring all the equipment and we'll make sure we've got the time. So we did. We went back to this stone, this uh, gray stone. And he started to feel really funny. And he, he said that he felt like he was in two worlds. And he went to stand by the stone, like the, the grave marker. Mm -hmm. um, and he, because he could set the camera up mm -hmm. on like a timer. Yeah. He forgot how to use the camera. Now he was a professional photographer. Okay? Wow. He couldn't remember how to use the camera. Well, of course I started laughing. Because I thought it was funny. And the more I laughed, the more he started cursing and swearing. He never swore. Oh, wow. Right? It was the only time I ever heard him swear. So I said, look, I've seen you do this often enough. I know what to do. You stand over there. Let me take the picture. Mm -hmm. You can literally see right through him. I took the picture. It wasn't doctored, edited, nothing. Oh, wow. And the grave marker... At the back behind him, the last name on it was Warren. And that was his last name in that lifetime, in this oh, lifetime, wow. not that lifetime, in this lifetime. So that was really. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but I've got quite a few pictures, too, of different uh, orbs and, mm -hmm. you know, things that I uh, pictures from uh, Maplehurst, well, the old Kiefer house. Yeah pictures from there that have things in it and oh yeah we've yeah <laughs> we've we've uh got like i say it, it really has been an interesting time mm -hmm. I've, I've written a, a note on it i'll look for it i know i've got it somewhere on facebook and okay and <laughs> so i'll go through there and if there's any others i'll click them and i'll send them to you too because i think you might find it interesting mm -hmm. and you can go check out that cemetery yeah, which one was it? Oh God, I don't know. It was oh, okay. It was a big one in Niagara. Okay, like Niagara Falls or like connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. at your local legion, we're marching to the beat of a different drum on a mission to support veterans, to have fun, and to welcome everyone to our ranks. You don't have to be a veteran to join the legion. And as a member, you'll join thousands of others serving our veterans, our communities, and our country. Oh yeah, and our member perks program will save you thousands on shopping, dining, products,